In today's video, I'm going to try and beat the most efficient graphics card on the market by clumsily tweaking a less efficient graphics card. But first, today's video is sponsored by Be Quiet and their new FX series of products, which is basically like their amazing standard products, but with RGB. Be Quiet has RGB-ified their Pure Rock 2 air coolers, Pure Loop 2 AIOs, and Pure Base 500 cases. And considering that they use non-proprietary RGB connectors, that should minimize the RGB struggle. And the best part about it is to celebrate Be Quiet's 20th anniversary, they've got amazing discounts on these products until the end of September. So check the link in the video description for some discounted Be Quiet goodies. Thank you Be Quiet for sponsoring today's video. The graphics card that I've tested that gives the most frame rate per watt consumed is this little guy. The NVIDIA RTX A2000, which is a very impressive but very expensive quadro-ish graphics card. Now, basically how NVIDIA made this graphics card was they binned some RTX 3060Ds and then they changed the core configuration a little bit, undervolted the crap out of them, and then they were left with the most efficient graphics card on the market today. Which got me thinking, the RTX 3060 isn't a super efficient GPU and undervolting it aggressively led to the most efficient graphics card. So what happens if we undervolt the graphics card that is the most efficient graphics card in the world today, aside from the little A2000? Which according to Tech Power Up's reviews was this graphics card, the AMD RX 6600. How we're gonna start this process is I'm gonna drop the A2000 in our test bed back here so that we can see what our target is for this test. Now with Battlefield 5 running at 1080p high settings, we are getting almost two frames per watt here. That's some crazy stuff. Now I just quickly want to point out here that this multiplayer map gives a much higher frame rate than the single player bit of game that I use for the benchmark runs. So if you see a lower average in the benchmarks than you were expecting after this footage, that's why. And the reason I do this is because the single player gives extremely repeatable results in terms of run to run variance, whereas the multiplayer is all over the place. Oh, and I'm not only going to use Battlefield 5 because AMD and Battlefield 5 have quite a hot romance going on and it would be very unfair to the A2000 to only use that. I think I'll use GTA 5 to balance it out because that seems to have the hots for Nvidia. So with all those asterisks out the way, let's drop the RX 6600 in here in its stock configuration and see what that does. But before dropping the RX 6600 into the system, I had to do some maths to determine how many frame rates per watt we were getting from the A2000. Now, I'm no mathematician, but on first impression, the RX 6600 may be drawing more power, but on this more demanding map, are we, are we getting a high enough frame rate that it's already more efficient than the A2000? Let me, let me quickly go do a benchmark and see. And after furiously crunching the numbers, I came to a terrible realization. So it seems like with Battlefield 5, the RX 6600 is already more efficient than the A2000, which may make for a very awkward and short video, but maybe that AMD Battlefield 5 love affair is just more powerful than we were anticipating. So let's try GTA 5 and see if that's any different. And after doing the GTA 5 benchmarks, two things became clear. First off, we still had a video, and two, game optimization is extremely important to the results we get. Having said that, let's start tweaking the RX 6600 to see how efficient we can get it. Oh, interesting. AMD's drivers have an auto undervolt option. Let's give that a try. Oh. Now, um, I don't think that's made a whole lot of difference. We're still in the high 90s in terms of wattage and the frame rate also looks the same. So let's quickly do the, oh, tank. Oh, tank, tank, tank. Uh, so let's do the benchmark, but I don't think auto overvolting's done a whole lot. And uh, no, unfortunately the auto undervolt didn't make a difference, or at least as far as MSI Afterburner can measure power draw. 
I then tried to manually undervolt the card, which also didn't seem to make any measurable difference to the power draw. The only thing that happened was when I went under 1100 millivolts, the card would just crash. So I set the voltage to 1100 millivolts and then moved over to the power limit slider, which unfortunately only lets us drop the power limit by 6%, which is quite disappointing, but let's see what difference that makes. That's quite an underwhelming drop in power draw, but it's less. And if we haven't dropped any performance, then we would have gained some efficiency on the 6600. Yay, look at that. We did actually get some more frames per watt. Now, unfortunately, we can't reduce the power draw anymore. It seems like the car doesn't want to use less than 94 watts. So instead of reducing the power draw, I think our next option is to overclock the graphics card to see if we can get more performance out of that 94 watts. So let's let's do that. But unfortunately, the previous result was the best one I could get. If anything, overclocking the graphics card just made it run worse. No matter what I did to the sliders, I couldn't replicate it. Benchmark after benchmark, I was just going backwards and there was no way for me to squeeze additional frame rates out of that 94 watts of power draw. Which, putting the dramatics aside, is actually still very impressive. Because with that little bit of power draw reduction, the RX 6600 is a decent smidge more more efficient than the A2000 in Battlefield 5. But again, that's with Battlefield 5, a game that seems to have inappropriately romantic feelings for the RX 6600. And it was already more efficient even before the power draw reduction. So let's see if the RX 6600 was able to close the gap with the more demanding use case, GTA 5. Now in stock configuration with GTA 5, the efficiency gap is pretty huge between these two graphics cards because the A2000 and the RX 6600 get about the same frame rate, but the A2000 uses 30 watts less power. So dropping 6% of the power draw on the RX 6600 isn't going to make much of a difference, but hopefully GTA 5 takes to the overclocking a bit better. Okay, so fiddling with the lame slider has dropped the power draw the expected amount, and if anything, we actually gained a bit of frame rate, so we get a decent bump in frame per watt. But still not nearly enough, so let's hope overclocking helps. Now over the last while trying to overclock the RX 6600, it seems like the core frequency slider doesn't actually change the core frequency in-game. I think the graphics card is pretty much running as fast as it can in that regard. The only thing that's made any in-game difference has been playing around with the memory slider. So I've maxed that out and hopefully that'll help us catch the A2000. Let's see. And with all the sliders maxed, we've gained a very impressive three frames per second, which means the RX 6600 is still quite far behind the A2000 in terms of efficiency in a game like GTA 5. So aside from a very impressive showing from the much cheaper RX 6600, unfortunately I wasn't able to do much tuning to the little card, which I'm gonna blame on quite a locked down Wattman, to be honest. Regardless, it was a much closer race than I was expecting, and depending on the game you're playing, you may actually have the most efficient graphics card out at the moment. Which brings me to the end of the video. Thank you for watching, bye bye.